What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome SketchUp extension for modeling with vertices inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you've ever modeled with anything like Blender, you know it acts a little bit different than the way it does in SketchUp. So um, sometimes it does do a similar thing to what we do in SketchUp, which is usually we'll create faces like this, and then we'll extrude those faces. That's how modeling in SketchUp usually works. Now, inside of programs like Blender, not only do you model with faces, sometimes you want to model with things like vertices. And so a vertex is basically one of the points that makes up an edge that goes around an object in SketchUp. However, let's say, for example, that we had an object like this one, Right? You can't extrude it without a face because all the push-pull tool does is extrudes faces. However, with this add-on from TomTom, you can actually work with the vertices instead. So what that does is that gives you the ability to do things like extruding vertices, um, scaling them outward from a point, other things like that. So just a lot of really interesting things. I wanna get into that a little bit more. But first, I wanna introduce you to Vertex Tools. So you can learn more about Vertex Tools by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash Vertex Tools. Now I will note that Vertex Tools is a paid extension, but it's also a very powerful modeling tool inside of SketchUp. Um, it's something that if you model like this, it's something that you're really going to want. So you can download this for $40. Note that a lot of the time I like to pair it with sub D. So sub D is a subdivision modeler or subdivision tool that allows you to actually subdivide surfaces in order to create these like smooth surfaces. So a lot of the time these two go together, but in any case, this is where you can get vertex tools. And so now let's talk a little bit about the way that it works. So if you look at vertex tools, right, it's a little bit different than sandbox tools. So sandbox tools does something kind of similar. So let's say that we were to draw a sandbox with sandbox tools, right? What sandbox tools does is it gives you the ability to do basically the same thing where it's coming in here and it's picking up those different vertices. And so if I was to bring the size of this radius down to like five feet, notice how if I was to click and drag, this is editing the vertex locations inside of SketchUp rather than the face locations. And what this allows you to do is this allows you to do things like fall offs where you have a really strong value in the middle and then a weaker value on the inside, which lets you create these more like organic type shapes. However, there's a bunch of limitations with sandbox tools. So for example, let's say that I wanted to rotate this. Well, now if I come in here and try to use sandbox tools, it's not gonna work the same way because Sandbox Tools only works up and down, not um, left to right or anything like that. So Vertex Tools, on the other hand, gives you the ability to really use vertex modeling in any direction. So if I was to activate the tool just by clicking in here, notice what I can do is I can click on one vertex or I can select multiple vertices and I can come in here and I can move them around like this. So um, you might've noticed that this doesn't give you the same result though that the sandbox tools does. So there's actually a function in here called the soft, soft selection radius. What the soft selection radius is going to do is it's gonna allow you to set a fall off. So if you pick this point right here, for example, right now, if I move this, it's just gonna move this one point, right? But you can dictate that selection radius. So if I type in like 60 inches, for example, notice how these vertices change color. Well, what that means is that means that now they're gonna have a more smooth or organic fall off um, when you move them around in the 3D space, right? So if I move this around, notice how I'm getting the strongest effect right here in the middle where I had this object selected and I have a weaker kind of like fallen off effect around the edges right here. So this can be extremely valuable for things like, uh, this can be extremely valuable for things like organic modeling inside of SketchUp. In addition, it's really a better tool for um, doing things like sites. So if I was to create another sandbox in here, um, it's really just a better tool than sandbox tools is for this kind of thing. So one of the things you can do, for example, is we could come in here and let's go to a top-down view. So you could select a series of vertices like this. And notice how when we do that, that soft selection radius is going to set what the fall off is. So right here with that fall off, it's gonna look something like this. But if you were to move over and select these, 
and set a lower soft selection radius, so maybe like one foot. Notice how when I type that in, that's going to adjust. Well, then that's gonna give you a completely different result in here. So in addition to that, this also, um, first off, it just works better from a performance standpoint, but it also gives you other tools in here as well that allow you to do a better job of selecting vertices. So for example, notice how there's a tool right here where you can actually draw a lasso around the vertices that you want. So if I go to a top down view and I click and drag, I can use this to select only the vertices that I want. Then I can let up on that. Well, notice how that allows me to select those really quickly. And so it just gives you a better way to do that than you get in sandbox tools. And then again, notice how you can use that soft fall off in order to um, create something that's kind of like flat on the top, but then uh, also kind of more softly transitioning to the flatter areas over here. So this tool also gives you the ability to do some other things that you might do in other more organic style modeling softwares. So for example, if you've ever needed to bevel vertices, this gives you the ability to do that. So what you can do is you can select vertices like this, maybe we'll select two of them, and then you can just click and drag, and that's gonna give you the ability to add a bevel to the corners right here. So if you ever need to bevel off corners, this can be a great tool to do that. This also gives you the ability to do some things that you um, are probably familiar with, with programs like Blender, doing things like vertex slides. And so what that means is that means, let's say that you needed to adjust this so that these vertices moved along this edge, right here, or maybe this is a better example. Say you needed to move these vertices up, but you needed them to move along this path. There's an option in here for vertex slide that allows you to do that. So when I select those vertices, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna take those vertices and it's only going to slide them along the connected edges like this. You can use this in order to make those adjustments where you can kind of maintain the shape of an object and make those easy changes. So this also gives you the ability to bridge um, gaps inside of your models. So for example, let's say that I was to select these edges and activate the bridge tool. Notice what that's gonna do, and it kind of did that behind the menu, so we may do it again. But if you select these vertices right here, click on bridge, it's going to bridge the faces between them. Now note that that works for more complex surfaces, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to work for things that don't have the same number of vertices, right? So if I try to do that here, it's not going to work, but here, where, I'm, where I've got a gap in my shape, it's going to work just fine. So if I click in here, notice how it's gonna bridge that gap for us really easily. So if you are trying to fill, it, fill in holes and you do have the same number of vertices on e either side, the bridge tool can be really great for that. And then another function that I use a lot when I'm doing any kind of like site modeling or anything like that is the ability to make vertices planar. So let's say that we were to activate vertex mode and we wanted to select a path for call it a road or something like that um, that's gonna follow along these hills. So notice how these are kind of moving up and down, but what you can do is you can come in here and you can select this and um, we'll go ahead and let's bump the soft selection radius up to like seven feet, make it a little bigger. But what that's gonna do is if you click on the option for make planar, it's going to find a best fit plane meaning it's gonna take all of those and it's gonna put them on the same level or the same plane. So notice how that got flattened out. While everything else, um, it used the soft selection radius again in order to keep the smoothness here. So again, for any kind of like site editing or anything like that, I find this to be a bit better tool um, for editing the vertices than sandbox tools. All right, so I'm gonna link to Vertex Tools in the notes below this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you'd like to see more Vertex Tools tutorials, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.